Now let's take a look at the effects plugins included. First is the Blue Verb. This is a reverb designed to emulate the vintage style 80s digital units. Reverb is the classic spatial effect used on just about every recording. It is fully featured with plenty of control over the reverb itself, as well as its own EQ for even greater control. Let's take a closer look at the individual controls and what they do. This reverb differs from many in that there are no preset rooms or other types via one single control. Instead, these spaces are recreated using the controls we see in the top section. First comes pre-delay. This is the time difference between the dry sound and the first reflection. This control gives spatial clues to the size of the room as well as the proximity of the dry sound to the listener compared to the walls and other surfaces. If you think about it, it's quite obvious. In a large room, the first reflections will take longer to reach the listener than they do in a small room. In the same way, the closer to the source the listener is, the earlier they hear the dry sound compared to the very first echo. The simulated room size is mainly controlled by the ambience and amount parameters. Think of increasing ambience as increasing room size, and amount as a depth control. Ambience is a multiplier of the pre-delay time. Having said that, these two alone aren't enough and will sound very unnatural without the next three controls especially. The Decay RT60 control refers to the time it takes for a sound to reduce by 60 decibels. It effectively controls the length of a reverb which would normally be longer for a larger room. But other factors, such as the reflective quality of the materials in the room, will also have an effect on decay time. Again, this is common sense. We would expect a large room with concrete walls to have a longer decay time than the same room with curtains or soft furnishings around the walls. They would absorb many of the reflections, shortening the decay time. Damping is also related to decay times, but affects the frequency behaviour over time. Higher frequencies decay much quicker than low ones, as they are absorbed much easier. The lower this setting, the less high frequencies that are present in the decay. Tail level controls the volume of the reverberations created by the previous controls. Stereo width controls how wide the stereo effect of the reverb is, and for most purposes 100% will yield the best results. Bottom left is the post reverb EQ consisting of a high and low shelf filter with variable corner frequencies and 15 dB of cut or boost. Master levels are adjusted by controls at the bottom right, input and output gain as well as a mix control. 100% is fully wet, zero is fully dry. Normally if you put this reverb on a send bus this would be set to 100%. Now let's take a look at another classic effect included with this pack, the CH2S Chorus. Chorus is created by delaying a copy of the original sound and then modulating its pitch with an LFO. This emulates not only the classic chorus effect, but can also auto pan. So let's take a closer look at the controls. At the top is the master section. There are gain controls for both the incoming and output signal a mix control to combine wet and dry signals as required. There is also simple EQ available in the form of low and high shelf filters that have 10 dB of cut or boost and can be switched in or out as required using the in button above the relevant control. Beneath the output gain control are the in out switches for the limiter and bypass. In the lower section are the dual chorus controls and panner. The chorus controls are identical, so we'll just look at one set. The second chorus can be used to create an even deeper effect. Both can be switched in or out using the IN button above the relevant chorus. The RATE control operates in one of two modes. Either time based, with faster rates as the control is turned clockwise, or musical based if the SYNC switch is engaged. This will sync it to Sona's tempo. In musical mode, the rate ranges from 8 bars up to a 30 second with all the musical intervals in between. Depth controls how much pitch modulation is applied and you can see this in the modulation graphic between the controls. This graphic also demonstrates the various modulation waveforms that can be cycled through using the button beneath the sync control. This will have an effect on how the chorus sounds as the modulation changes. 
The sine or triangle produce a more traditional chorus, but the others provide options for unusual or more aggressive effect. The delay parameter controls the delay of the modulated line. There are low and high pass filters that can be used to further shape the sound. The pan parameter controls where in the stereo field the chorus sits. On a stereo track, one can be set to the left, the other to the right. Remember on a mono track that if a chorus is panned fully right, it won't be heard properly. The panner parameters found in the centre are very similar to the main chorus controls. Rate controls the speed of the modulation, only in this case it is the pan position in the stereo field that is modulated. Again, the rate can be time-based or based on musical intervals. Depth is how far in the stereo field the modulation takes place. At zero, the field is so narrow the effect appears to be off. At 100%, the pan is swept from fully left to fully right. Remember, to get the full effect of this, it will need to be either on a stereo track or a mono track will need to have its interleave button set to stereo. The waveform button controls the way the pan is shifted through its range. A sine or triangle waveform will produce a more linear movement than, say, a square waveform, which will appear to jump from side to side. Now let's take a look at another modulation effect, the APH2S phaser. A phaser creates a copy of the signal and then uses all pass filters on which the phase of the signal is inverted. It then combines these two signals, which creates a comb filter. This comb filter is then modulated up and down the frequency range of the audio to create the classic phasing sound. The buttons along the top control how many filter stages are applied. The more filters applied, the stronger the effect. The rate parameter, like those on the chorus unit, can operate in a time mode or musical interval mode switched with the sync button and controls the speed of the phase modulation up and down the frequency range. Depth controls how far up and down the frequency range the modulation goes. The higher the setting, the greater the range that is swept. The waveform button sets the waveform used for the modulation and this affects how the modulation moves. The resonance control amplifies the tone changes created at the phase change points and produces a more pronounced effect. Width controls the overall stereo width of the effect. To the right is the master section, with controls to adjust the mix of dry to wet sound. Colour gives a variation of tone, while output adjusts final output level. The tempo delay, DL3D, is a digital delay consisting of three delay processes that can be used simultaneously with different pan and level settings to create some very complex delay effects. Let's take a closer look. Looking at the controls from left to right, we see the sync switch above the tempo control. Sync forces the delay to use the project tempo as the bass tempo. Uncheck it and enter a beat per minute value for independent tempo control. Beneath that, the mix control balances dry and wet sounds. Now let's take a look at one of the delay units, and the other two have identical control. The unit itself is switched on or off with the IN button. Beneath that are the musical interval tempo settings that use the master tempo as a bass. There are also controls to adjust those intervals for triplet and dotted values. Beneath that is the pan control, which positions that delay line signal in the stereo field accordingly. The level parameter controls the level of that signal. Each of these controls can be adjusted independently for the three different units, allowing not only different delay times, but also different pan and level settings. Toward the right are further controls that apply to all three delays. Feedback adjusts the number of repeats. The higher the setting, the more repeats there are. Output adjusts overall level of the unit. There are also adjustable high and low pass filters that can be switched in or out with the IN button. The Oil Can Echo TLE2S also creates echo delays, 
but simulates a more low-tech tape-based unit. The input control on the left can be used to help with gain staging. At the top are the delay type controls. There are four labelled 1964, 1977, 1989 and 1995, mimicking the tape delays of those eras. For example, the 64 setting is nowhere near as bright as the 95. The slap, delay and echo buttons control the bass time between delays, with the echo delay control providing a fine tuning within each bass setting. This mimics the way a tape delay would work though, so there is some audible detuning while making adjustments. The sustain control is similar to a feedback control, increasing this increases the number of repeats. To the right of the output meter is the flutter control. This adds a little vibrato to the repeats, as if caused by the imperfections of tape repeats. Dry wet mix is controlled by the mix parameter and final output level with the output control. Bypass does as it says and bypasses processing completely. The ADR2S valve driver plugin is designed to add tube type overdrive or saturation to tracks. The grungeliser modes provide different basic overdrive tones and the valve driver controls the amount of overdrive for each mode. It can be switched in or out using the in control. The final sound can be further tailored using the high and low pass filters which have both variable frequency and bandwidth controls. These two can be switched in or out with the in button. There's also a switchable noise gate, which has a threshold setting for controlling where the gate starts to work. Attack controls how quickly the gate opens and release how quickly it closes. There are also the usual output and bypass controls. The Stereo Imager ST2S is a relatively straightforward plugin that can be used to adjust the width of the stereo image. As well as input, output and bypass, the only other control is the width control. Moving it fully to the left reduces the output to mono and moving it fully right widens the mix further than a door alone can. The graphic above provides visual representation of the output. The analog track box is a vintage channel strip processor consisting of low and high pass filters, tube emulator, a noise gate, compressor and a four band EQ. The top half of the processor is dominated by the two meters in the middle, an input and output meter that can be switched to left or right channels. Either side are the input and output controls for gain staging adjustment. There's a phase switch for inverting signal phase if there are any phase issues on your audio. And at either end are a high pass and low pass filter with switchable corner frequencies. The top section also contains two further switches. One to switch the limiter in and out and the other to bypass processing completely. All of the various modules in the lower section are switchable. Let's look at them from left to right. First comes the tube saturator. The triode control is switchable between two different modes, single or dual, with dual providing more overdrive. The amount parameter controls how much overdrive is added and color provides control over the harmonic content of the signal. You can hear the difference by moving between the two extremes. The gate is used to remove unwanted low level noise. Threshold sets the level beneath which the audio is muted by the gate remaining closed. The gate is opened at this setting. Attack sets how quickly the gate opens to allow audio through and release how quickly it closes again once the level drops beneath the threshold. Next comes the compressor. Threshold here sets the level at which gain reduction kicks in. The amount of gain reduction is set by the ratio control. 3 to 1, for example, reduces a signal from 3 decibels over the threshold to just 1 decibel over. 
Attack sets how long the compressor waits once the signal is over the threshold before it applies the amount of gain reduction set by the ratio control. Release controls how quickly gain reduction is released once the output level has fallen beneath the input level. Makeup adjusts the output level to make up any gain reduction applied. And the post switch controls whether the EQ comes before the compressor if it's off or after the compressor if it's turned on. Now let's look at the EQ module. This is a four band EQ consisting of low and high shelf filters and two peak or bell filters. All filters have up to 15 decibels of cut or boost. The low shelf has a variable corner frequency ranging from 40 to 600 Hz. The slope is set using the Q control at the top. The high shelf also has a similar slope control and the corner frequency for that ranges from 1.5 to 16 kHz. The two peak filters are labelled low and high mids. The centre frequency for lower mid ranges from 200 Hz to 2.5 kHz. Higher mid ranges from 600 Hz to 7.5 kHz. Bandwidth for both is fully adjustable using the Q control. And that's the analog track box, a fully featured channel strip processor.